Hi guys, today's video is on the Northern Anatolian Greek factions that have been added into RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. Make sure you check out the longer interview video I did with Mausolos on this subject for all the factions in the description below. Make sure you like and subscribe and I hope you enjoy. I'm kind of sad to get to the last three nations, but I think we've got... At least one big hitter in here, anyway. So, Northern Asia, uh, Northern, we're going to call them the Northern Asian three factions. So, uh, we'll start with Heraclea Pontica, and we've already talked about them quite a bit. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to expand a little bit on them, or are you happy with what you've uh, what you've said? I I guess expand a little bit on these guys because they seem yeah. very very important from what you were saying before. Yeah, yeah. So Heraclea, Pontique. I mean, it's called Pontique because it's on the Pontos, like Senos, the Black Sea. Mm. And um, it was one of many Heracleas because it was it was named after Heracles, which was obviously quite yeah. um, popular. <laughs> a quite a popular thing for Greeks to do. Yeah. And um, we've already seen that it was one of the instigators of the Northern League. And it also directed them against Pontos at one time. And um, it invaded the Crimea to 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 defend Chersonesos, and it it inv invaded the Pontic Patapolis to um, re-establish the Byzantine monopoly on the Black Sea trade. So it's fair to say that Heraclea had huge significance, which is probably often overlooked. I think it's one of the most underrated um, mm. underrated factions in cities in the Greek world. Have, we have, have a nice, it's a bit of a longer quote, but I think it's worth quoting here yeah. from Stanley Burstein, one of the most eminent historians of the Hellenistic world, who's now in his well-earned retirement, but still putting out articles from his nice villa in California. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and he wrote back in 1974, and I quote Stanley Burstein, few of the hundreds of ancient Greek cities were of more than local significance. Heraclea Pontike was one of those few. From the time of her foundation, about 560 BC, until the Roman conquest in 70 BC ended her history as an independent state, Heraclea played a leading role in the political affairs of northern Anatolia and the Black Sea Basin. Moreover, from her foundation until her capture by the Ottoman Sultan Murat I in 1360, in a period of almost 1800 years, Heraclea was an important outpost of Hellenism. Throughout her long history, Heraclea, virtually alone of the Pontic cities, produced a series of intellectuals who made notable contributions to the development of Greek thought. Men such as the philosophers Heraclitus Ponticus and Chameleon and the mathematicians Bruzon and Amiclas. End of the quote. Nice. Yeah, I think that, that already says quite a lot. And in the 4th century, they, they were under several tyrants who annexed most of the coast here and mm. erected a bit of an empire. And um, they lost some of this um, after the death of, of, um, of the last tyrant, Dionysius, who was actually a fanboy, if you remember the first part of the video earlier, yeah. uh, of Dionysius of Syracuse, who was very influential in southern Italy. Mm. And because he was also called Dionysius, the tyrant of Heraclea, he bought all the items and like the personal I don't know, the personal pencil, stuff like that, of Dionysius of Syracuse. Oh, right. <laughs> so he, he could emulate him. Proper vampire. And then the Heraclea. Yeah, absolutely. And the Heraclea <laughs> lost some territory in this period, but they reclaimed some of it, and they would still go on and try to reclaim other possessions along the coast, three cities you see at the, at yeah. the northeast here. And um, yeah, even though it was eventually conquered by, by Rome, we've already said that it remained a free city and they um, mm. even managed to, to free Chersonesos from the Bosporans, basically through their influence in the second century AD. Mm. So uh, it would remain an important city until, yeah, as Spurstein said, basically the 14th century. Wow. But then it was actually captured by, um, uh, by the Ottomans and um, lost a bit in, in, in importance. And I think it's now called Karadeniz Eregli in, in Turkey. Well, Bucha, my church pronunciation. It's not very important anymore. So it has 120,000 inhabitants. But for most of uh, at the time of Greek history in Asia, it, it was really important, yeah. Oh, cool. Nice. So uh, in terms of their units, they've got the Heracliote Horifalakes, which we already talked about, the uh, Epibartai, which is the Marines again, the Hoplites, and then they also have the Mariandinian Javelin Men. Oh, yeah. 
So whereabouts are those guys going to come from, AOR-wise? Is it Heraclea exactly, or is it somewhere else? Is it one of these other settlements? Yeah, they're basically come going to come from Heraclea and also some of the um, adjacent towns, maybe. Yeah. The Mariandinians are basically the, the halot of Heraclea, uh, their okay. version. And we have a very disparaging comment of Posidini Posidinius of Apamea, <laughs> who's known as a barbarian friendly uh, philosopher, but was he wasn't very friendly in this case. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was um, a teacher of Cicero, and oh, he right. wrote that the, Mar that the Marandinians, they themselves would be too stupid to sustain life themselves, so they needed their, the, the crafty and clever Greeks of Heraclea to support their life. Oh basically. my gosh. <laughs> so um, it was good for them that they would be enslaved because that was the only way they could sustain their own lives because otherwise they would just simply be too dumb to survive. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> classic, classic Greeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> classic Greeks and Romans. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, well, I guess hopefully they're more decent than that on the battlefield anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the Hallett units of Sparta, they're not going to be very quickly. No, exactly. Add some flavor and get yeah. that bit of history into the game. <laughs> yeah. Right then, let's uh, let's move further east and let's go to Sinope. Sinope over yep. here. Uh, yeah. Which is actually a very annoying place to siege down in EU4 if anyone's played EU4. Because it's a level <laughs> 3 fort at the start of the game. And playing as the Ottomans, it is incredibly annoying. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's 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 in this game as well, though. And uh, it's a single city up here, surrounded by Pontus and rebel settlements. So you do have a bit of rebel expansion to do if you want to. Uh, and of course, Pontus behind as well. Uh, but yeah, just a single city on the coast. Looks like they're trading a lot, though. Um, so what was the significance of Sino up here? Mm. So, um, if you've paid attention so far in the video, you'll not be surprised to hear that Sinope was a Malaysian colony. Because mm. who else would own a colony there? Um, <laughs> in the 6th century, or 7, oh, I think already in the 8th or 7th century BC. And yes, it had a lot of trade connections, a lot of bases, pottery from all over the Greek world was found there. And um, of course, it also had friendly relations with the North of Leek. And it would later become um, we're quite well known as the capital of Pontos, but yeah. in 270 BC it is not yet under Pontic rule, and they would it would take two wars for the Pontics to to actually conquer it, and um, the Rhodians would help uh, support Sinope, which is why they are allied with Rhodes at the start of the RIS campaign, hmm. and yeah, that has a big significance as a trade city, and they yeah, are do wonder in. EU for who controls Sinope? Is it the Empire of Trebizond? Uh, no, it's its own nation, I think. All oh, right, so yeah, I think the Empire of Trebizond is actually already gone. Yeah, that it just would have been a uh, nice uh, connection with our last faction, which is actually Trebizond or Trapezuntis, the Greeks might... called it. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember. I can't quite remember. You know, I haven't played uh, EU four for a little while, but I just I, it's just a really annoying settlement. That's the only notable thing in my mind about about it, because it's just such an annoying settlement to take in early game, because it's a level 3 fort and it's on the coast. Um, so, yeah, it's just an annoying little settlement to take early game when you don't have cannons. But Yeah, yeah, I think the Empire of Trebizond may already be history at that point. Uh, but I think Trebizond, in case, Trebizond is, is in the game, but I'm, I can't remember. I don't know whether... I think it's just called Sinope, but I, I'm, uh, yeah, it might be called Trebizond and then the city... The, the the the, uh, the province is called Sinope, but I can't I can't remember honestly to be fair. So uh, yeah, I mean Trapezus anyway. That will be our last last faction. Yeah. So these guys <laughs> have only existed until 1461. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it did control Sinope at some point, and it also controlled Heraclea, funnily enough, and Chesonesos. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Fair. So yeah, these guys have got uh, archers. So when I'm saying the generic names of these guys, just just remember that it's Sinopian archers, Sinopian epibartai, Sinopian hoplite. I probably should have said that earlier, but not right at the end of the video. But yeah, they've got their own archers, epibartai and hoplite. And uh, finally, yeah, trapezus. 
right over here, coming up into Georgia and the Caucasus, really. Um, yeah. So, yeah, right on the eastern edge of Turkey, uh, we've got Timur Scythios, that's a name, uh, of Trapezus up here. Uh, and I'm assuming these guys were another big trading uh, trading city. And I'm assuming, if I, if I've got this right, that it was they were formed by Militos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's correct. You know, it is possible that um, it was basically set up by the Zenopians after uh, its foundation. But basically, mm. that was Milesians who founded Zenopia, and then a few years later, they went to yeah. Utrapitsus. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, it's a bit of a Greek outpost in in, Baba, in the Barbaricum, as you can see. Mm. It had a good harbor. It exported wood. But um, the mountains here go very close to the coast. In Roman times, there was actually only one four in the region of Trapezus, yeah. um, with two cohorts of auxiliary troops, because that was all you needed to defend the coastal stretch of land, because there was just no way through <laughs> wow, because of the mountains. <laughs> yeah, You basically had to go all the way to Amizos, which was um, the first, oh, uh, is it Amizos? Or I always mixed them up the other one, um, Amasleia. Yeah, the, the 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 two first major cities of Pontos, not the oh, Pontic right, Kingdom, yeah. a bit to the Sorry. west, a bit to the west. Yeah, yeah, Amizos, yeah, Amizos here, there. Yeah. Yeah. You basically had to go all the way there to access um, the, <laughs> the the roads to the south, which is a bit crazy. But um, yeah, Trapezus profited from this situation. But of course, other Greeks and then also the Romans, they kind of thought that it was a bit barbaric and um, apparently <laughs> its inscriptions, they're not quite correct. They have wrong Greek words. Oh, a right. bit cut off from the rest of the Greek word, of course. Yeah. Well, but it's still considered an important part of the world. Hmm. When the 10,000 mercenaries fought for Cyrus the Younger, the Persian pretender around 400 BC, um, whose uh, march uh, the down to the Black Sea, the Anabasis, um, is told by Xenophon, who was on this march. Uh, when they reach Trapezus, then that is when they are relieved and they know they've survived the march through the Persian Empire. Yeah. And the Greeks see the Black Sea behind the tree, behind the um, tree line of the mountains. They see the blue or uh, the wine rat, as they would say, of the mm. Black Sea. And it would say, Talata, Talata, the sea, the sea. Oh, <laughs> and cool. go to Trapezius and know that that they had survived, even though then again afterwards they had the idea to to lend their capacities as mercenaries to Thracians and other powers, so a lot of them would still die. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, it was still it, it marks a watershed basically between the Barbaricum and the Greek world, most yeah. of the ancient Greeks. And of course, it's a bit mixed. It's a bit like I don't know. Uh, like a station on the outskirts of the known universe, a deep space yeah. nine or something in there. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. Right on the edge of the Greek world, the far edge. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. exactly. So these guys don't have any special units. Is that just basically because there's the again they're on the edge? They didn't they didn't really uh, commit to to much fighting, and they're they're isolated, like you say. Yeah, yeah. We don't actually know too much about about them and the military we didn't really find much truth be told and uh, yeah we will eventually add of course Colchian units because Colchis is the region just to the east um, where Jason and the Argonauts went to recover the Golden Fleece uh, modern day Georgia or the coast of modern day Georgia the interior is the Caucasian in Iberia um, so yeah this is this is this is a bit of a mythical land Greeks yeah. and uh, um, they, they, they will have Colchian AOR troops eventually when we get them. And up there, you can see Dioscurios, which is even further off, which is uh, owned by the Greek city states. Yeah. And it's mainly known archaeologi archaeologically, but stuff from Miletos and Heraclea Pontike, from Athens, from Zenopa, from Trapetus was found there. So um, presumably, a Greek city called Dioscurios can be located there, and that then is the. Uh, end of the greek universe <laughs> yeah <laughs> fair play um so that brings us finally on to the final thing then which is just the greek city states in general we've seen them dotted around the map i'm actually gonna jump onto the 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 bigger map and just try and highlight them uh but why did you guys decide to bring those guys in rather than just leave them as rebels 
I think, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, I mean, quite a while ago now, but uh, yeah, um, one of the main reasons was that um, that the slave, the rebels, they they like to combine their armies, so we tried to split them up, unless there was an actual alliance attested between these states. Um, so we often have one Greek city as slave and the other as GCS. So um, uh, okay, if you can yeah. fight against each other, you can try and manipulate them. But if you yeah. go to Epirus, for instance, or Illyria, if you go to the coast of southern Illyria, yeah. you will see there that we have two next to each other, Apollonia, I think, and Epidamnos. Yeah. Um, because they were allied, um, yeah, uh, yeah, there. Epidamnos and um, Apollonia, because they were allies, and we know they were allies, both of them are owned by the GCS, and the same is the case in Acadia, because all three cities there were actually part of um, the Shremony Day and League, the Athenians led yeah. against Muslim at the, in this period. So they are all owned by the GCS, and they also allied with Sparta, because Sparta was part of the of the Hieromedi Day League together with the Athenians and the Ptolemies and mm. the Achaeans. And I think also some of the, I think the Gortinians or Lithians, but of course, in gameplay, that's not going to do much. I mean, sometimes yeah. they actually go and siege and siege some of the, the, the Aegean islands, but it's unlikely that the Cretan AIs will invade uh, <laughs> Macedon in the first 15 turns of a campaign. Yeah. Um, but yeah. If you play a Cretan faction, then you can, of course, role play and help your allies in Greece against yeah. um, against the Macedonians. And yes, the the, Knos the Nossians, the Lutians, and um, the Gortinians, they all attested for mm. to actually sending troops to Greece itself. Yeah. yeah. So it's basically just to you know, sort of have an actual faction there rather than just rebels. That rebels are very passive; they don't do that much. So an actual faction will go out and fight and try and take land attack its uh, neighbors and obviously with rebels they don't really upgrade cities so with faction there yeah. you're going to be yeah. able if you take one of their cities it's not just going to be a bog standard town after a hundred turns it'll actually be upgraded which is a lot better than taking yeah. like you know taking a town after a hundred turns and it's still just a town uh, but yeah it's yeah. just more battle royale and, and all that sort of thing um so yeah really cool well i think i think we've i think we've made it I think we've got to the end. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for that, Malzoff. That was honestly so interesting. Uh, really in-depth on all those factions. And I think everyone can really appreciate the amount of historical knowledge and reasoning that's gone into all these factions and everything that's in the mod as well. Yeah, thank you for having me. And thank you guys for watching. And guys and girls, I should say, and everyone... Um, we hope you enjoyed the video, and there will be more RAS content in the coming weeks on Red Z's channel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can tell you that. And uh, we are building towards the, the next release, of course, of RIS 0.6. And as you can see, um, we've made great progress with the factions, the units, and the map, which is at this moment being completely finished. So. Um, there's going to be so much new stuff you won't believe it <laughs> yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome so stay tuned guys make sure you do subscribe make sure you do like this video if you've appreciated it uh, appreciated it because there might be another couple of videos coming with miles loss uh, in the future as well so uh keep that in mind um and make sure you check out the greek aor units and the uh, and the map showcase if you've not seen the map showcase as well and stay tuned because as i've said already Every weekend, guys, is going to be an in-depth uh, development update on version 0.6 all the way to release. So every weekend, you're going to be full of RAS content just like this. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Thanks once again to the mod team, especially um, Mausolos. So thank you very much uh, for watching, guys. And I will see you all again on the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>